All right, welcome back to Stock Talk on July 26th. We are in the midst of earning season, and you guys can imagine this is pulling the markets every so which way, up and down, sideways, everywhere. So uh, I'm going to try to cover all of your tickers today, but in the meantime, I want you guys to pay attention to a lot of the trends that have been broken or that have continued on its current trajectory, especially given that earnings have come out recently. So we're going to start off just talking about general market movement and the SPY, which is the S&P 500. And the reason why we're starting on this graph is because we always start on here because it talks about uh, where the markets could go. So we know that there's a blue line here and that blue line signifies the uh, actually the almost the last area of resistance that we can see on the chart. So you guys can imagine that uh, we have a resistance at 284 we're tracking right at 284. We actually broke through yesterday, but this was just a false breakthrough. It was also facilitated by the trade deal uh, that was made with the E uh, Europe and the US. But note that you know we are still on a bullish run, and note that we have been continuously moving higher. We tested the resistance again. Is there anything wrong with this 180-day chart of the SPY? And the answer really is no. We continue to be bullish, and we have to be bullish until we see some sort of sign of reversal. So far, there's no sign of reversal. We're just near the top. Um, and therefore, if you wanted to, sure, you can take your profits here. Actually, that might be a good idea, um, You know, especially if we consolidate up here, perhaps for one or two more days before possibly doing what? Possibly there's a reversal back down because there's a resistance here. Note that this should be a pretty strong resistance given that this is the first time we've tested this resistance um, in quite a while. So uh, where could we go down to? If we did go down to, well you guys can see that there are many, many areas of support. The first major area of support would be around 280.86 followed by another area around 279.31. We have the moving averages down here so we can even pull this down down to the one year one day chart we have moving averages that can catch us you guys can see that the last line of defense would be around the 273.88 of course this is really far away so until we get there we don't really have to talk about that but I just want to put it on the table for you guys um, you know I want to put it on the table because there's upside and there's also certainly downside currently we don't see any downside but we just need to be aware that we are at the resistance all right, let's take a look at um, TVIX, uh, which is volatility. So uh, volatility has been actually dropping. So interestingly enough, actually volatility went up, but you guys can see that the overall trend is to the downside. Uh, what was interesting was that you guys can imagine we had some horizontal movement on the volatility today. And that was just given that we had the NASDAQ pulling down and this is uh, partially propagated by Facebook earnings yesterday. You guys could have we saw it together, right? We, if you guys are watching my video together, you guys would have known that the Nasdaq fell when Facebook fell, you know, twenty percent, and uh, that's what you know that was a catalyst for it to come down. You guys can see that we pretty much stayed down here in this horizontal trajectory for volatility as well. Um, so it didn't really drop that much, but you guys certainly could have played this intraday if you did identify this trend. Um, now, one way to identify this trend, well, you guys can see that this was a support here, this is the support here, this is the resistance here, this is the resistance there. Is it going to play out horizontally every single time? Absolutely not, but if this was something that you identified intraday, you certainly could have played this um, horizontal pattern. All right, so let's go to 4 slash CL crude oil futures. Now, crude oil went up just a tad bit today, but you guys can see that we did sell off a little bit. So one thing to note is you guys know at 10.30 a.m. Uh, Eastern time today, uh, the inventory reports came out. So upon the inventory reports coming out, you guys can see that we had some wild fluctuations and then we had a massive spike up. Um, you go, so one can imagine that in the short term, this could be a bull flag formation, but I just want you guys to pull back revisit and take a look at what this looks like right now. You guys can see that we closed right at the 20 EMA line on the one year chart for crude oil. So this is again an area of 
really big risk because you guys can imagine this is a bear flag pattern in the long term playing out potentially to the downside and there could be another leg down I think we've been talking about this every single time it's been you know continuously going higher and the reason why it's difficult to take a crude, take a crude oil trade um, is because you guys can imagine if we take a trade right now one of course there's the bear flag going against us Two, we have many resistance areas. We have a resistance area up here. We have a, you know, and let me take you guys to the 180 day chart. You guys can see that we have a resistance area here. We're pretty much at 69.90. We have resistance areas pretty much at the breakdown candle at 70.67. And of course, there's resistances up here as well. So there's just a lot of resistance areas. I don't know if crude oil will get up there on this run, but if it does, great. If it doesn't, then we expect that leg down before possi you know, the possibility of it going higher. And at that point, in my opinion, I would be more comfortable taking a crude oil position. But just right now, given this trend, it's getting a little iffy, even though it's edging up just a tad bit. And that's just my opinion. You guys don't have to um, you know, go through my opinion or go by my opinion. Uh, before we go to the natural gas and other commodities and your tickers, I would like to thank everyone for watching these videos and commenting on these videos. As a matter of fact, a lot of you guys made some really nice and astute comments in the YouTube video yesterday and also um, on the Facebook page. So if you guys were on the Facebook page, you guys talked about certain trends that you saw and that was very, very nice because I actually saw the same trends and you guys saw it you know, when I saw it as well, probably saw it maybe even a little before me, talking about a possible breakout of AMD, which we'll talk about in a moment. But keep those comments coming and be sure to like this video. And if you do like it, if you don't like it, perfectly fine. Hopefully, hopefully you'll like it in the future someday, sometime. All right, let's get right next to it. Uh, natural gas, forward slash NG. So forward slash NG, we were actually looking for... Um, a confirmation of the 20 EMA. Uh, now the thing, the, the interesting thing is, we actually formed a couple of red candles today. Can you can see these four-hour candles. We formed, even though natural gas went up just a tad bit, we did for a couple form a couple of red candles, and we're not at the 20 EMA quite yet. We peaked over. This looks pretty bullish for now for now. But so you guys can imagine UGAZ, which follows natural gas, went up half a percent. I want to wait maybe one more day, one more day. I need it. I really want it to come down and kind of retest or at least reconfirm this area or 2.779 as a possible support. And unfortunately, we just haven't had that confirmation yet. Um, I just like to be a little more patient on this one. I want to just take you guys to UGAZ, which is natural gas. You guys can see that here's natural gas. Here we've popped over, certainly a pretty bullish sign, but at least I want to come down to around $55.11. If that's possible for natural gas, please do that. And then uh, if, if it can take off from there, that's perfectly fine with me. So around, uh, what is it, 55.11. Um, Yep, pretty much that number is what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, this is a good trend, certainly. I do like that. Okay, 4 slash GC, gold features. So gold features, and you guys know the reason why I'm not playing gold uh, is because, you know, you gold tricked me once. Remember we talked about gold when it was forming a reversal area here? It looked pretty nice, right, on the one-year, one-day chart. You guys can see that we formed reversals. Now we're beginning some tail candles, but we did form another reversal down. You know, does that mean it's going to come down tomorrow? No, it certainly can form another green candle and then just you know can, and then form the reversal back up. That's certainly possible. But the reason why I don't like gold right now is because of this trajectory. I if I wanted to see a reversal, right? I would have wanted to see it at the very least start slanting higher. Right now, we're going in a horizontal trajectory. It's almost like gold doesn't know where to go right now. And um, and if that's the case, that's certainly not very good. As you can see, that, that would be a consolidation to the 20 EMA for another possible leg down. Here's the 20 EMA line on the one-year chart. It could easily consolidate before another leg down. It could go up, but right now, you trick me once, that's fine. You trick me twice. That's not happening. So, <laughs> so just learn from your mistakes, and that goes for all of you guys, right? We are constantly learning, and we are not going to be right 100% of the time. And that is just a fact, but we just need to be more right than 
wrong, as you guys know. So uh, there's gold. It's declining just a tad bit. So we'll just wait for this one to pan out. But in the meantime, um, just no trades for me at this moment in JNUG. All right, let's visit a couple of tickers. Um, the first ticker that you guys want to talk about is AMD. Now, AMD, I was looking for uh, it to drop, but obviously upon earnings, we don't want to, you know, in my opinion, I don't want to take a chance on earnings. But the one thing that was interesting was on the three-year chart, you guys can see there are many earnings report right here, right? But the one thing you guys all realize is when we broke out, you know, when we start breaking out, and you guys can see upon earnings, we actually, you know, continued going higher for the most part. For the most part, when earnings can, can you see that? Even when we're moving higher, for the most part, we kept going higher when we've broken out a specific pattern. So right now, we've broken out a specific pattern, and therefore, AMD continues to go higher. So as you guys know, um, I was looking for it to, at the very least, a comfortable position for me would have been a drop to the 20 EMA. Did that occur? It did not occur. So actually the outlook of AMD has slightly changed based off of today's movement um, is it possible to drop down here sure it is but is it you know is it likely that's going to happen no that's um, that's no longer likely uh, in my opinion so here's what I'm expecting for AMD um, I, I expect AMD to Continue on the uptrend, overall uptrend. You guys can see on the 180-day chart that the 150 SMA or the orange line has been acting as support. Right now, yes, we are overextended. Yes, we can go higher than 1850. Definitely, definitely possible. Um, but at the very least, you know where the entry position is. It should be around the 150 SMA. It could definitely go higher. It could definitely pull to the 20 EMA before it bounces. It's just your comfort level at that point. Now, I want to tell you guys an intraday a play that you guys could have made and this is one that I was actually eyeing as well since AMD did break out so the thing about this is I even talked about on the Facebook page I posted a message saying AMD is on a breakout trajectory you know I just put that I'm not gonna tell you to buy or sell but I tell you what I'm seeing right now and you guys can see and we're looking at the 20 day one hour chart and that this area has been acting as a resistance you guys can see that around $17 actually if you looked at the previous days I believe the high was 1730 so you guys can see how we broke out when we broke out we had high volume and now you guys can see that we pushed higher and there was really no catalyst for it to come down and at that point you guys can see on the one day one minute chart how steady it was going higher and therefore that's a pretty nice signal of a breakout and therefore you know for AMD you know there's a good chance that it could continue higher in the next few days um, uh, so allocate if you're if you guys are at AMD great job if you're not then uh, you know you can uh, ask yourself where you want to go in at that point. The next ticker you guys wanted to talk about was um, which one was it? Oh, Facebook, right? So Facebook, here we go. Here, so here's Facebook, and this was the um, 20 plus percent drop based off of earnings yesterday. So this is what I want you guys to kind of keep in mind, right? The the more bullish a pattern is, especially these big stocks, right? Facebook, Amazon, if they start to miss earnings, and it, because you guys can see that in the past we've kind of beat earnings, like pretty much investors like the earning report. We when we miss earnings, you know, this could be what happened. You know, this could result in this sudden drop. And you know, this goes with all stocks. Every stock that goes up has to come down it has to come down rest find support before it goes going up again and therefore you guys can see what happened today uh, or yesterday last night with um, Facebook so with Facebook a lot of you guys are kind of kind of worried or uh, one thing to note is I want to show you guys the actually 10 year monthly chart and note that we kind of came down here but you, you know we actually actually pulled a tail candle here sure there's actually you know maybe perhaps another 15 30 days of consolidation down here before another move up if you're looking for an entry into Facebook in my opinion you have to be long on Facebook and you have to be willing to take a ride down if that occurs now a, a down to where down to the 20 EMA that would be a 10 percent drop you have to be that and that's just my opinion you have to be willing to do that if you're not willing to do that if you take a position now then chances are you're gonna exit at a loss and that that would not be good 
right? Sure, there's a chance that it could pull up, but like this this goes to the fact that we're you know we've tested the 20 EMA, but there's a chance that we could test it again, you know, in the next few days, next few weeks. Doesn't matter. It could certainly happen because of this massive drop that of that has occurred. So I just want you guys to be aware uh, if you guys are in Facebook. All right, comments time. Shanky, eight. QEP Kevin? Question mark. So QEP. All right, we gotta keep track of what's going on because of earnings because this is driving me, uh, driving everyone in you know every which way. <laughs> so here's earnings seven twenty six, and we see uh, what happened. Let's see. We. Oh wow! Oh goodness! Okay. So one thing. Okay. So this kind of looks like. Um, uh, a little bit looks like Facebook, just a tad bit. Let me look at the three-year chart. E, okay, okay. Let's one year, and then let's take a look at the long term. Ooh, okay. So, so the one thing you guys can see that, um, and this this is a monthly chart. Uh, you know, this is a ten-year monthly chart. Is that you guys can see how we've gone down. Consolidate, gone down, consolidate. Can you imagine at some point you can consolidate sideways and go down again? It certainly can. And the one thing you guys want to pay attention is this is on a period of active decline. This is down, 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 really with no recovery. On the one year chart, um, it is short term up, but I just want to want you guys to keep in mind that because the long term trajectory is down, um, this drop, you know might not be the oversold value that we are looking for. Sure, we're short-term oversold, so the question is at what point, if you're satisfied with the gain, that you're willing to go out and leave without taking a look at this one. Uh, that's a hard one to think. I think, in, in my opinion, short-term is okay, long-term doesn't look good at all, and therefore, mm, you know, this is one that you you have to allocate, but surely we are on a downturn right now. Look at this very stout double peak on the top. Okay, uh, uh, Facebook, yeah, Prashant. Hopefully uh, that one helped, Prashant. J W M uh, S F I X. Is there move up? Is there a move up on S F I X? So thank you for that question. Uh, so SFIX is Stitch Fix. So you asked if there's enough data, and let's take a look really quick on the three-year chart. Yeah, so there is not enough data right now. Um, I can certainly, and this is just based off of, uh, you know, what we've seen in the past. You're right. What we see, up move consolidation. Up move could be a consolidation before another up move. But right now, um, we're at the 20 EMA. And we're getting, you know, in that area in such that we could move higher. We could certainly move lower because, as you can see, it doesn't obey the 20 EMA that well in the past. And therefore, this is not a trade that I'm actively going, would want to go in. As we have been overextended, we have been bullish for quite a few, for a month and a half almost. And now it needs to rest. It looks like it's coming down finally. So, um, if you you know one thing to note is if you guys want to take a trade at the very least you need to pinpoint your stop loss which is also taught in the course but um, you guys can also uh, make sure you pinpoint that stop loss as this one is declining. Uh, Rizwan AMD yep we talked about AMD UCTT uh, fundamentals look okay so let's take a look at UCTT and whoa okay so here's UCTT. Wow, so we dip below the support line. Um, no, so the thing is, you guys can see that we dipped below the support line in the past and had found a support below the support line at some point. So we'll give the support line, you know, maybe a, even a greater leeway than before. Whoa, okay, so let me adjust this thing really quick. So. So, oh, that's a little too much. 
So yeah, so you guys can see that the support line is around down here. So uh, when I readjusted it like that, what does that look like? <laughs> that looks like we're still quite far off from the support. And as, as, as a matter of fact, we are quite off from the support. So um, there's certainly more room for this one to drop. Uh, right now, you guys can see that... Um, Oh, actually, actually, you guys know, let me see. Actually, what is going on here? Is that the one day, one minute chart? Oh, okay, so the reason why the, you know, the chart is so obscure is because we had earnings once again. So you guys can see that we bounced straight off of earnings. Uh, we came down, bounced off, and now we're going back up. So uh, one thing to note is this is on a declining pattern. However, you did identify that this could be a possible um, area of support and we in fact do see some area of support right now so if you want to take a position you could but you just got to keep in mind that this one is on a declining trajectory so uh, just be careful with this one BABA uh, -B -A, Alibaba John sure thing so let's take a look at BABA -B -A. So BABA, -B Alibaba actually looks significantly better than before, and I'm going to actually readjust this line to look like this. You guys can see that we've been on an uptrend. We've reconfirmed the support quite a bit of times, and this looks quite nice. So, yeah, so this one um, right now has a pretty good um, buy signal to it. Uh, so I do like the trajectory. It's on an uptrend. Good call out. I like it. The one thing is we do have resistance up here. You guys can see at 199. That is your resistance area. But sure, you do have a couple of dollars to that resistance. So this is a good one. Of course, allocate your risk effectively. But a good, good one, John. I like it. Uh, Steven, thank you for your comment. As always, I appreciate your support, as well as Momo. Uh, and let's talk about K9's LRCX. So this one seems to be really popular among you guys because um, I've heard LRCX uh, quite a bit in the past few. Whoa! All right, can you guys see that? Okay, so... Very nice. You guys can see that we've had a support down here, and this line doesn't have to be perfect. It isn't perfect, but you guys can see that we've had a support um, pretty much down here, and that you guys can see, wow, we just spiked right above, and that is a pretty good signal for LRCX. Um, I like it. This looks really good. Remember, we made this box. How long ago did we make this box? Maybe like several months ago. But we made this box saying that this is the area to buy. Right, this is the area to buy, and now we are trading at 187.50. So that is up here, pretty much right at the near term resistance. Um, yeah, so that's another one that it looks pretty good now, now that we've gone up on earnings. So good job on looking at that. The one thing I am curious to see is what will happen after earnings tomorrow. Are we going to start selling off? Or are we going to start, you know, continuing our uptrend? So that is one, you know, to be actually watching. Well, if you didn't catch this up move, should you catch on it today? Uh, it's hard to say because we're right at the resistance area, right? This is the near-term resistance uh, around 187. So um, that one, I think, revisit tomorrow, perhaps intraday. If you do find that uh, move upwards, then, you know, got to make sure that you have that confirmation that we're moving higher. Okay, and with that... That's the end of this video. Was that quick? I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, um, be sure to like this video or subscribe to this channel. Guys, subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already because I do appreciate all of your support. And in the meantime, you guys can hopefully benefit from some of this information uh, that I give you guys. Uh, tomorrow is Friday, so there is no stock talk, but I will see you guys Sunday uh, for yet another stock talk. So in the meantime, enjoy your day. Enjoy your trading day tomorrow, and I'll see you later.